Hey, this is Kevin again. Uh, this time I'm bringing you the last of my collection of the hyphenated wars, the Austro-German War, or the war of between brothers, whatever you'd like to say, but uh, Prussia uh, and Austria and Italy went to war over a very complicated series of questions. And of course, I'm not here to give a history lesson of that, of that war, only that, um, you know, in the London newspapers, they said that... Uh, Unfortunately, Berlin was going to be occupied by the Austrians. Others wrote in Germany and France that this was going to be a long and bloody war that could last a decade. Uh, it could be anything but the truth. It lasted only seven weeks in reality and culminated in one of the largest battles of the uh, 1800s, uh, really uh, at uh, Königsgratz. A uh, massive, massive affair. But, uh, the course, the war ended Austria as a, as a major power in, in Central European affairs and actually resulted in them breaking their kingdom up and causing, creating two different uh, um, kings uh, to hold the Austro-Hungarian Empire together. But their army didn't change much uh, since the, uh, the conflicts with France and, and Italy in the 18, 1840s, 1850s. The uniform did a little bit. But, um, you know, they still relied heavily on, on uh, Stoss tactics, which is large battalions or large brigades and attack column. They had a really nice weapon, the Lorenz, which was a, was a good rifle. But uh, they, they had a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of elan. So it was a very, very nice army, Ex excellent cavalry. Their artillery was superb. So let's take a look at the army that I built and um, see if you, if you like it. Well, here it is. Finally got it off the painting bench. My Austrian 1866 hyphenated war army. This is the army that would have fought the Prussians during the Seven Weeks War and uh, various other operations. It's not the army of Solferino. Against the French, their uniforms were white with blue pants. Um, I elected to go with the later one in the gray overcoat. I guess it's semantics. You can use it um, for both if you wanted to. But um, I wanted to build it. Um, it was important to me as a person who travels through Europe a lot. And I love Austria, love Germany. And... Uh, it was just another representation for me. But um, how I used predominantly Old Glory figures. That's all you'll find here. Um, I think they make a really, really nice range for this period. Um, they're organized just like I did my Prussians and my French. Um, each base is on a 40 by 40 stand with eight figures. I think that really looks very, very good and... It, uh, you know, makes for, you know, a good representation. So each stand really is a, is a battalion. Three stands is a regiment. That's a brigade. And um, if you look at, this is one corps. So it has its corps commander, has its Jaeger battalions. It has a division. So this is your division, uh, divisional commander with uh, its artillery attached to that division, and then two brigades of infantry um, organized an attack column. And then uh, they can pull from the cavalry corps here, uh, light um, uh, troops, um, ulanen, little lancers. Uh, I've got uh, quite a few of those that can actually be attached to the corps, to the divisional structure. And then there's two divisions to a corps. So it's organized uh, as they as they were. I, I picked up the book on um, on that time period, and it seems to, to to work out extremely well. So I have four uh, Austrian corps: so one, two, three, and four, and then I have a Saxon corps in the back. Um, there is a a cavalry corps, so a heavy a heavy cavalry corps here of uh, four. Uh, brigades of, of cuirassiers. I've got uh, its commanders. I have the army general, which we'll pull in a little bit closer, closer here, uh, which is kind of my rendition of what it should should look like. 
uh, four aides, or no, six aides. And then uh, Light Cavalry Corps, which would be broken up and put into the into the corps and divisions. There's a corps uh, cavalry artillery group, more uh, Ulanen, more artillery. And um, yeah, it looks very, very nice. I took a little bit of license uh, on, on flags, um, especially the, uh, the Hungarian ones. I just wanted something a little bit different, but uh, you experts don't beat me up too badly. Um, yeah, I think uh, the generals, however, you know, Old Glory, this is the silly thing. Old Glory does not make any generals for the Austrian army. They have Austrians, but they have no generals. I think that's probably the most silliest thing I've ever, ever heard of. So the only company that actually makes generals for this period uh, are two, uh, but the best one is Essex. Good old fashioned Essex. So as you can see, I've, I pulled... I, I think I think they look pretty good. Um, I was really pleased with the mold. Typical Essex horses. They have a wide variety of, of different generals and colonels, uh, etc. As you can you can see from from here. So, I I was really pleased. Um, Essex came through um, where Old Glory failed. Don't ask me why, but that's just the case. Anyway. That's uh, that's the army. The Saxons are the same one that I had in the Prussian video. Um, I added to it, uh, which I didn't have in my earlier video, which uh, I added a, a, a regiment of uh, Saxon uh, dragoons. I added uh, two units of uh, Saxon uh, uh, Jaegers and um, another well, a unit of uh, Ulanen, and I actually painted up the artillery. So I didn't have any Saxon artillery. So there they are. So I think that uh, this is, uh, um, and there's different different types here. I've got a couple of Württembergers in there and uh, and uh, Baden a unit uh, and Saxon. So it's kind of an allied Saxon uh, core. And yeah, whatever, it's nice. Um, so yeah, I, I finally finished it. I'm, I'm very pleased with how it looks and I'm, I'm ready to start gaming. So thank you for watching. Well, there you have it. Well, you know, if you, if you look at the history um, and the attack of the Prussians, which was strategically absolutely brilliant, they really caught the Austrians off guard um, both politically and militarily. However, you know, the Austrians didn't, didn't uh, always perform poorly uh, in the early engagements uh, with the Prussians. Uh, they, they did very, very well. They won a couple of battles, although they lost a lot of soldiers. They, they performed well. But in the end of the war, if you looked at the casualty ratio, it was almost four to one. I believe the Prussians lost 39,000 and the Austrians was way into the 150,000 men uh, for seven weeks. Uh, that was just devastating, right? But, you know, I loved painting the army. It painted up easily and well, and, um, well, it needed to be a part of the collection. And I hope you enjoyed yourself looking at it. Take care.